April fresh. Howdy, I'm Jason Lewis, and today on the Auto Edits Jeep, you caught me mid prep, getting ready to run the Rubicon Trail. Now, this is a bucket list item here. I'm going with the guys from Modern Jeeper. Now, that's an online Jeep community. I met those guys through the Metal Cloak folks, and speaking of, Part of my prep is not just to get under there and make sure things are tightened, lube your drive shafts and all of the things that need attention, check your fluids. I'm gonna go ahead and stick a set of these Metal Cloak Overline rocker guards on here. It's gonna be the final bit of uh, protection since I have the Overline fenders on here and have loved them and then the front and rear bumpers. Um, this is gonna be it. Now, I kinda was going back and forth between the Overland and the Overline. Now the Overline, are their most aggressive ones. They're, they're the most low profile, so they don't really offer a ton of a step. They kind of offer more of a toe hold, but they're the toughest. Now this is a pretty straightforward install. I'll bring you in, we'll get this thing on, and then maybe we'll go underneath and I'll show you some of the detail and prep work that I do there. Hey, I got my jean shorts and my sandals on, so you know I'm here to party. Let's get this going. <laughs> The obvious first step in this procedure would be to remove the stock rocker rails if you had them. This is a Rubicon, so it had fairly okay stock rails, and we'll even utilize a couple of the original mounting holes and hardware. Here's a quick tip to make things a bit easier. Put a strip of masking tape across the lower edge of the body. This will help when you go to mark the holes that need to be drilled and the ones that just need a bit of clearance. All right, here we go. So now... <laughs> What you want to do here is find as many long, awkward pieces of wood, some with warps in them, to make this as teetery as possible because there's nothing like having a 65 pound piece of metal above your sandals uh, ready to fall on your feet. I'm kidding, you don't want to do that. <laughs> but it's what I got going on right now. And it'd be a shame to scratch these things up before we even hit the trail, but let's see what we can accomplish here. Now we know because I have the overline fenders on, I want this hole to be kind of my guide hole. This is gonna be um, the, the final decision on the location uh, forward to back on this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this bolt in here to hold it in place. And we'll just get that started. How many of you guys thought that I was gonna drop this thing on the ground before we even got this thing lined up and into place? I kind of thought it was gonna happen too, but <laughs> anyway. All right, so now we'll get the rest of this kind of clamped up and in place and we'll get a look at it there. Now I'm gonna give one little bit of bonus support right here just to get the tail end in position. There we go. That's nice and tight. All right, let's move this out of our way for now. Now that we have a good visual inside here, everything looks like it's up flush where I want it. It's nice and solid. It's time to mark our holes, and this is where that tape is gonna become very handy. Now the tape is not just handy just because it gives us a, a, something easier to see inside there. There's a couple of holes that you don't actually have to drill out, but you just have to clearance them one way or the other. And the tape, just you watch, gives us a better sight line for what we're doing. So just make sure everything's nice and flush. And then this gives you a nice center point to aim for. Now while we have it in position, there's a couple of holes underneath that you gotta mark, so let's go do that. Another tip would be to center punch a few of the holes as you mark them to make sure your drill bit doesn't wander. Then you could pull the rocker rail down and get after those marks. So that's the benefit of the tape, is that as you can see on some of these holes that are already here, you just it gives me a, a, an indicator of where I have to clearance it. Then obviously this hole needs to get drilled and have it center punched and marked. Likewise, center punched and marked. Then there's a mark here just to clearance this one, clearance, 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 
and then we're gonna use that hole. So that's the point of the tape, little tip. I started with a die grinder and made a pass clearing the holes along the rail. A Dremel tool or a file would do fine here. Next up is drilling. Always start with a small bit when working with sheet metal to prevent a possible tear. I use a step bit after my pilot hole and have had pretty good luck with that. Clean up and paint any exposed metal before continuing. Since all applications are a bit different, I only needed to install two of the threaded inserts. The kit comes with a simple but perfect tool to do this. Tighten the nut insert on the bolt, making sure the lock washer and guide nut is in place. Press it flush into the hole. Use an 11 16th wrench to hold the guide nut and a 9 16th wrench to tighten the bolt. You'll feel the insert bottom out and now just remove the tool and you're good to go. Time to get our sketchy lift back in play. Get it roughly centered. And let's do this. Okay. All you people that with with odds that I'm gonna drop this thing. It's getting close. Ooh, that went right into place. So let's, uh, while we're here, we'll get this one. So now we know our front's secure. Let's work our way backwards. Now, just get all your bolts into place and finger tight. I made sure to give a little support where I needed it and then tighten the bolts along the bottom seam. Once those are tight, you can hit the bolts on the bottom of the tub. Making sure to put lock washers on the two bolts that go into the threaded inserts you installed earlier. It's cool to see how, <laughs> how tough and it's nice to have this perspective uh, for when I'm hitting some obstacles. And if I really need to lean on these things, it looks like I, this is gonna be no problem. I gotta watch out for my body mounts more than anything because it just offers a bit more clearance and then all of this strength right along this, this body seam. This stuff, I've hit a lot. We're gonna deal with that too. There's a surprise next, next video on this thing. Now for the final little bit, we're gonna put these little, on these, these are functional. These stainless bolts here actually remove the flares. On this, they have the same ball, but the, the stainless bolts here are, are decorative just to match. And so I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on these because uh, these stainless bolts are obviously stainless <laughs> and this is mild steel. So you're gonna want to, if you ever did want to take those out, I can't imagine why, but you know, in the instructions, they actually say to put these in before you put these on, because I guess in older iterations, there was a nut that captured this, but now they're threaded. Smart guys over there at Metal Cloak. And so now you just put them in like that. Done. Put that one on the rear, and we'll step back and really appreciate these things. I really like it. I really like them a lot. And while I can sit back and look at our fresh install for the rest of the evening, Let's get back under the Jeep for a quick show and tell, and then I'll give you the secret on how to take your chassis from this clean but kind of tired look to very fancy. Now before any big wheeling trip, it's a really good idea just to kind of get underneath your Jeep, check, make sure all of the bolts are tight, nothing's loose, you don't see anything obviously hanging or out of place. Um, and then I go in and I will lube all my drive shafts. Any place that has a little fitting like this, I will go ahead and put the grease gun on. Um, all my suspension joints don't have that. They're just, they've been fantastic for the year or so that I've, I've, I've had everything, but this is just what you do. Now, as you notice, this, this axle is pretty clean. I fogged this with a little bit of black paint. Now I'll show you the paint that I use. I use the Duplicolor uh, semi-gloss engine paint for all of the under stuff that I do and I just fog that in. Basically what I do to the chassis here just to keep it fresh and looking good in between times when I paint it is uh, I used a WD-40 type thing. I used to use WD-40 in a squirt bottle, not an aerosol can but a squirt bottle because um, it was cheaper to get it that way and you could just really coat stuff. But now I use the Lucas Oil stuff. I'll show you that in a minute. But I just coat 
most of the, the suspension bits and some of the frame bits, and it helps with, keeps the rust at bay, keeps bolts loose. Um, it attracts a little bit of dirt if you go out right away, but other than that, that's the trick. Now for the basic cleanup, I took this thing to the pressure washer down the street before I brought it here. And so that's why it's just got a quick knock the big chunks off style on it right now. And then what I would normally do is spray um, some sort of lubricant like a WD-40 or now I'm using this toolbox buddy. And I have really had some good luck with this. Um, I'm starting to switch over a lot of my fluids uh, to the Lucas products. Um, ever, I think I mentioned that in one of the last videos. Uh, I've been very happy with it, all the diff engine oil, transmission fluid in the truck is all Lucas now and I'm starting to dig this stuff. So I kind of look for the brand, you know, you get that brand loyal uh, thing going. So, <clears throat> so now what I do is it's obvious. I mean, I, hopefully it's obvious to you that you don't want any of this type of material onto your brakes. So it's very important to cover that. So I just usually shield them with a piece of plastic while I get in here. And then you just go in here and just give it a good coating, you know, everything. Mmm, smells April fresh. Doesn't really smell April fresh. And this will help freshen everything up looking wise. Um, it do, has, you know, when you have a good quality product like this, it actually has like a rust preventative type things, and uh, that's kind of important when you got a Jeep and you're gonna be out doing gnarly stuff. So that's it. This is the, the secret. It's, I, I hope you guys were kind of thinking that there was a magic product or something that I use to make the Jeep and the truck chassis look good all the time. I'm sorry guys, there's not. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Sorry. Wah, wah. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, the basics of that. Just spraying it. It doesn't really hurt anything that I've noticed over the entire history I've been using. Um, this this process and then just let that sit for a second once you rub that in and wipe that in it makes things look pretty fresh and that's what you guys are seeing whether that's all Hollywood smoke and mirrors well I'm sorry that's what I do and it seems to work pretty good for me and then I just go in and wipe the big chunks off make it look pretty and that's the secret. <laughs> there's no, there's no magic formula. It's just what I've been using for my, I'm old man now. So this is what I've been using my entire adult life on every single dirt bike, every single car I've ever done. This is uh, how I keep chassis and mechanical stuff looking good. This little trick right here. So maybe it'll work for you. Try it a try. But I'm going to continue to lube up chassis parts, continue to just coat the thing down, get it looking sweet, and have a little bit of protection on it. Here's another funny thing that this stuff, when you do spray it on, and if there is any baked on dirt in areas, sometimes this makes it easier to clean the next time. So there is an added benefit to that. Someone could probably, someone smart could probably tell us why that is that there's some sort of property that it's eating through stuff. I don't know, but you'll see how good this looks. Boom, there you go. Just wipe the big chunks off, make it look pretty. And there you go. Got yourself a fancy fresh looking chassis here. That's the trick, guys. A little bit of toolbox, buddy. And your junk will look squeaky clean. I mean, right? Hey, Pinto. Pinto comes out now that it's nice and cool out. The sun's gone down. Temperature's a little bit better. Can't blame her. Can't blame her. Trader. I was out here in the heat. But there you go. That's uh, the $10 question that you guys have always asked. How do I make the chassis look so good? It's a trick. I mean, it looks pretty good and it stays, obviously it's been working. 
You said you guys saw the truck. All right, so there it is. Rocker rails on, solid. Chassis prepped, ready, and got you guys a little double, little you know, how to detail a little bit. You know, there's no easy way. There's gonna be some cleaning, some pressure washer stuff, um, but that's what I do and it's been working. You guys have asked, there you go. Uh, the Toolbox Buddy is my new best friend when it comes to that stuff. I'll let you know how it goes after this next trip on the Rubicon, right? Gonna run the Rubicon. Uh, stay tuned for that video. It'll be coming up as soon as I get back. I'll start work on that and get it up. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to follow me over there at AutoEditJason on Instagram. And until next time, enjoy your drive.